Okay, this lesson is on the geochemical survey and it's the second part of our exploration for a mineral deposit. So if we think about what geochemical survey is, it's where we're not so, not so much looking for the, the, uh, the structure and the properties of rock, but we're actually looking at the contents of the ore. So geochemical, they complement and they are the next step in exploration. Whereas geophysical is done by the air, geochemical is done at ground level. And it's done by sampling. So we've actually got to get down to these zones that we initially see in a geophysical survey and then we start taking samples and analyzing them. So let's go through the different types of samples that we've got. And the first one we're gonna talk about is stream sampling. So here what we've got is we've got minerals that are present in the water in solution. And a stream or a water source might flow through a uh, pass through an ore zone and then pick up some of those some of those minerals in solution and carry them with it and it's those that are then found in in that water um, further on downstream so that's right this minerals present let's put it in solution so by looking at of dissolved If a stream has passed through an ore zone. Okay. Okay, our next location that we would take a sample or a survey, we've taken our water sample. Um, but the rest of it would be in what we would call a soil and saprolite sample. So if I was going to draw, I guess, a, a little image here, and I'll draw it down here, we would have maybe uh, trees. This is the ground surface. And then we would have like a zone of soil. And this might be our zone of soil here. And if you know what soil is made out of, soil is made out of humic material, broken down plants, particles of weathered rock. This is our soil. And below that, for many meters, we would have what's called a saprolite zone. Now a saprolite zone is an oxidized layer. It's a layer of rock that's actually been oxidized because it is quite close to the surface and oxygen and water can actually make its way through into this sort of rock and weather it. So let's write, the, uh, write down what this is. So saprolite is rock material exposed to water and oxygen. It is weathered material.
Now, we have, uh, not only is, um, not only do we have a lot of iron minerals and, and in our oxide layer, you'll often see it's quite red in color, but often you'll see some other ore minerals, for example, like a copper oxide or silver oxide that will be present and it will give off actually some, some quite striking colors. If you notice a copper oxide, you'll notice it'd be quite green in color. So this saprolite zone is where you can actually get, uh, I guess you can get a lot of uh, examples or samples of the ore body that might be underneath. How does this get here? Well, water can actually make its way through these zones and leach into the saprolite and to the soil zone. So let's look right down here about soil sampling. So soil, and let's do the same for the saprolite. So water leaches, sorry, spelling wrong there. All right, so we've got our soil and we've got our saprolite sample. Um, the last little sample that I wanna talk about here is, our, is actually taking chip and core samples. And I'll talk about how we go about that over the page. But chip and core are, I guess, two ways that Geologists and uh, mining companies will know exactly what is below the surface. They will take core samples. Let's say, for example, we'll draw a ground surface here. And they will take core samples or chip samples at different angles. And they'll use them to identify the exact location of an ore body on the underground. So let's say, for example, that this is exactly five meters deep, and this is five meters deep, you would have a core sample that would show bedrock, bedrock, and then all of a sudden you would see a mineral ore. You would test that using a chemical assay, and we'll write down what a chemical assay is in a second. But by doing that, you're able to see exactly the amount or the grade of the ore uh, and the depth at which those grades are. So we'll, we'll talk about chemical assay. This is very important. It's a huge part of the mining industry and so many chemical assays are done. It's actually very, very integral in the whole exploration process. So during a chemical assay, a sample is crushed to powder, like talcum powder. Not talc, but like as fine as talcum powder. The contents are put in a furnace. And they're normally burnt at very high temperatures. Combined with spectrometry, they actually can get a really good analysis of what is actually there. Oops. Content. 
Since hate in the friends. Okay, so the sample is crushed to a talcum powder. The contents are heated and passed through a mass spectrometer to, um, to actually allow the metallurgist to understand exactly what the contents of that sample are. And that's what happens to most chip and core samples. That's the chemical assay. A little bit more reading might need to be done, but not a great deal. We only need to know that a chemical assay is a sample taken of crushed rock, which is used to get an understanding of what is below the surface. Okay, now we're gonna play a little game of Hangman at the request of Sam to break up this lesson. So I'm gonna start with a word for you, and I've taken the letters that you guys have guessed already, and here is our word. Nice six letter word for you, should be really easy to guess. So let's go with our first letter. And that was suggested by that was suggested by Simon, and his letter is C. No, I'm sorry, C is incorrect. We're going to build our, our hangman's uh, stand. Uh, the next letter suggested by Sam is I. I'm afraid I is incorrect, so it's no good. That's our first one. Let's uh, our next letter suggested by Simon is J. Not a very good one, I'm afraid. There's his body. Uh, next letter is B, and oh, B is correct. Well done, B. Well, we've got one there. Okay. Our next letter is S. Oh, I'm getting very close now. I'm quite excited. Um, our next letter, suggested by Simon, is T. Okay, well, can anyone guess what it is? Nope, let's go to our next one then. It's V. Oh, very interesting. Simon, uh, no, that is incorrect. Uh, next letter is G. Again, Simon, thank you, incorrect. Um, the letter O, Sam, uh, no, incorrect. And uh, the letter L, ah. Oh. Excellent. Uh, and our last guess is the letter U. Thank you, Simon. No, it's incorrect. Oh, he's died. Oh, what a shame. Um, if you know what the word is, I'll let you uh, email me your correct answer. Okay, so let's keep going with our geochemical exploration. Now we're gonna look at our sampling again. We're gonna look at our chip and core. Sounds like a great TV kids show, chip and core. Um, we wanna take a look at our chip sampling first. And to do that, we need to look at the two methods that we use for that. The first one is called R-A-B, which stands for Rotary Air Blast. Um, REB, it's one of the cheapest methods of actually taking a sample, and it can extend down to about 70 to 80 meters. So I can get quite deep, and it's also really cheap, costing around $10 a meter to drill. And what it does is it brings up a small pile of rock chips. Rock chips just sitting there on the ground. It digs down and uh, it actually use, makes use of, I think it's compressed air, it actually blasts down into the hole and then sucks up those chips, leaving these little piles all over the ground. So our RAB, our rotary air blast. Um, our next type is our RC drilling, 
which stands for reverse circulation. Okay, reverse circulation works at uh, a greater depths, up to 200 meters depth. And what it actually uses, it actually uses a drill and a pipe. That actually, I'll show you here, I can show you an image here of the RC drills. So this, this, this I guess this drill bit then sits at the end of a pipe and uh, it rotates very fast. The chip, rock chip material is actually brought up um, through these holes themselves. So air is pushed down, air is pushed down and the rock material is brought up this pipe. And here you can see what it would look like, this pipe here. And it brings up quite similarly to RAB, uh, to the rapid rotary air blast, it brings up these small chips. So, again, a little bit dearer, around the $40 per meter. Why? Because we're getting we're getting much further depths. Uh, instead of just piles of dirt on the top, they, they put them in little bags. Uh, it's, uh, yeah, nice to see these little bags of sitting around. Okay, again, these chips, all of these chips go to, they go straight to chemical assay. Okay, so what we do is we, we get these indications of roughly what is below the surface based on these chips. However, if we really want to know what is actually below the surface, we need to go and we need to use our diamond class and it is our diamond drilling. Diamond drilling is expensive. $100 plus per meter. Um, you can drill to depths of several kilometers. Generally in the gold fields, they don't dig this sort of depth. Uh, if we're talking about many kilometers, we're talking about oil and gas. There's a lot more money in oil and gas. What you end up with is the recovery is a whole rock sample, not just chips. It allows rock, rock types, structures such as faults, and relationships. with other rocks. It gives us the most detail. A core in a core yard you will see many boxes that look, I guess, a little bit like this. And in these boxes are meters or one meter lengths of core.
it is the job of a junior geologist to do what's called meter marking, where they mark the depths. Let's say 85 meters here, here is 86, here is 87, here is 88. And they scan each piece of core looking for individual outcrops or any unique, uh, I guess you could say any unique samples that might be worthwhile sending off to chemical assay. So on the PowerPoint, I've shown this diagram here, which shows the samples. And here's a, an image of the core yard. And a geologist will simply come along and look at each one of these bits of core. If they see something unique, they drill, they cut it in half. They send off half of that core and crush it down and send it off for chemical assay. With the rest of it, they can work out the structure of the rock and any other relationships. When they get their details from the chemical assay back, they can determine exactly the grade at a certain depth. And they're able to make a map, for example, a map like this, showing not only, I'm just gonna reduce, move this down a bit so you can see. They produce a map not only of the major ore body itself, but also the different grades. So here in this red section here, we have, I guess you could say a high grade ore, and around it, we would have a lower grade ore. If you notice there, you can see these little gray markings, and you'll see this on the PowerPoint. These little gray markings are actually the mine, underground mine workings themselves. Another example of, um, of details that you can take from uh, core analysis. Here is an example of, a, um, of, a, of another mine. This is the surface of the earth. Here we have this gray material here is, is our host rock and this red material here is our, uh, is our ore body. If you can see, you can see the small little lines that are running down here. Those lines show the core drill holes. And if you look up here on this one, here we've got the surface, here's our raw body, and then each one of these little lines down here is their core holes. Some of those core holes might come in at different angles. They don't have to come in straight from the surface. They might drill them in and cross them over in order to get some sort of indication of, you know, the exact nature of an ore body. But with this information, and with the information that you get from the core, the chemical assay, you can draw a three-dimensional image of an ore body map it out exactly where it is and, and what it looks like, and then work out how your mine is going to extract that ore as efficiently as possible. It's all about viability. And the more information you can get about your mine based on the exploration that you've done, the more money that you can save and therefore make. Okay, that's it for today. Good luck, guys. If you have any questions, email me.